when a narcissist argues with you, it's never a productive argument, right? It's never constructive. It doesn't lend to building anything good in the relationship. What it does is tends to break things down and force you to take accountability for everything they do, right? So let's talk about six ways a narcissist might argue. General bullying, where you feel like you have to defend yourself or cower or you're deflecting their devaluing insults. And so you're you're dealing with the bullying instead of dealing with the topic at hand, which is the actual thing you're having an argument about. What you'll notice when I say all of these six things is that what a narcissist is doing is deflecting the topic. They're deflecting. They are diverting the topic so that they don't have to deal with the thing that is the actual issue and thus take any accountability for anything they're doing on their part. So another thing they might do and do do is the circular argument. Circular argument gets things literally going and as it's described, a circle. So you start, you say something, they do all kinds of things that is gaslighting, that is word salad, twisting truths, just blatant untruths that are um, sort of pulling you in another direction and then leading you back all of that, all of this stuff that they're doing, all of this deflection, all of this, you know, the word salads, anything which will misrepresent what you are saying and deflect it to something else. You go down the rabbit hole with them, you follow their tangential thinking, they're sidelining, they're pulling things in a bunch of different directions. And then what they do is they spin it back and say, see how you do this thing back to the original topic. And you start over, or you keep trying to pull it back on track. And the whole thing keeps going in a circle. So one point I'm going to make here right smack in the middle of saying all of these is you will understand and see why gray rock is so important. There is no way to have a conversation that is meaningful and to have a, a productive debate or argument with someone who is using these tactics, it basically shuts down all communication. And that's their point. They don't want to deal with what is the matter. They want to push it all back onto you so you can deal with what's the matter and they can go on their merry way. They don't want to deal with it or they actually enjoy this sort of fighting. And so they, they jump into it. So number three, Lies, deflection, denial, and blame shifting. At the third way that they might argue is through lying to you and blaming you or shifting the blame onto something else. Well, it's not my fault because, you know, and well, I did that because you did this. Well, I wouldn't have had to do that if you hadn't done that. Um, that didn't happen. I don't know what you're talking about. I, that is not what happened. I don't know why you're, I don't know why you're trying to tell me what to believe. <laughs> All right. You hear that. Um, often. So number four, arguing without the understanding and compassion of the other person's side. When you have a healthy argument with someone, when you're in healthy debate, you're considering that other person's position when they're talking. You're not sitting there holding your own so that you can just come in and bulldoze through the whole thing and win the argument. Hopefully, if you're in a healthy relationship, you're trying to hear the other person's perspective, even though it's hard, even though you want to be heard. When two people are heard, there's no need for any of this. And that's why we can't have healthy interactions like this with a toxic person because they don't allow it because there is no space for you and there's no space to hear them because they're just making stuff up. It's a back and forth arguing without any consideration for what you feel. Um, it's a deliberate misunderstanding and, and character attacks really and it often gets to the point of actual absurdity. They will say things that just, it, it's its like fluff, right? They just say ridiculous things to take the focus off of what the issue is, put it back on, or <laughs> they will only have compassion for their own side because they don't have any, any um, empathy, really, any true empathy for you, any active empathy for you. So they'll be like, well, how do you think that makes me feel? And you're like, well, wait a minute, you're the one that cheated. What do you mean? How does it make you feel? You know, so it's, um, yeah, there's no compassion, no consideration and no empathy in their argument. Number five, projecting, projecting. They will blame you for the things that they do often before 
you even blame them for doing the thing that they're doing, right? The blame shifting to the point of pointing a finger back with defensive deflection, all right? And they go into an attack mode from that position. The projecting isn't just projecting like blah, 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 and walk away. When they're heated with this, they're really at it like as if you did this thing and you know you didn't do that thing. And you were like, wait a minute, they did that thing, <laughs> right? You, it's When you've had this happen, you know what I'm talking about here. It shifts the attention off of themselves, right, on to the thing they're deflecting toward, you or someone else. They can deflect towards someone else as well. Um, and it literally takes all accountability away on their end. So they they don't have to take any accountability because it's, the other person or it's you or it's the situation or it's whatever they're projecting onto. And then they will hit you with like a wave of accusations, throwing you off track, sort of a word salad of sorts, a negative one of projected things coming at you. Number six, triangulation. Triangulation, they pull other people in to make themselves look innocent, to make themselves look like the righteous side to make themselves, they say, well, that person over there unknows what I'm talking about. Or they'll send someone else and say, gosh, you were really hard on so-and-so because, so they will get people triangulated into the situation. Or even if the other person doesn't know, they'll say, well, I know your mom doesn't think that way. I know your friends don't think that way. Everybody, everybody believes this. So they can triangulate sort of, um, what's the word vicariously, they can triangulate without actually having another person literally involved. They can triangulate in your own head, meaning pulling in society, pulling in what's normal, pulling in what, what you would consider normal. Like, I don't know, everyone seems to think this way. I don't know why you don't. And so it's a, it's a total mess, right? So arguing with a narcissist, the point is none of these things that they do are worth your time. All they're doing is wasting your time. All they're doing is hurting you and confusing you more and getting you pulled further and further and further and further down into the, you know, the the horrible feeling of self-worth loss, the horrible feeling of confusion with them being in charge, being in control. This is why gray rock is important when you are in the middle of something with a toxic person and they are using these tactics. They are so not worth your engaging with. It really isn't. You engage with any one of these argument tactics and they'll flip to another one. It's not like they're like, oh, today I'm going to, I'm going to use the old word salad. No, they throw the word salad in, they throw the projecting in. It, they're coming at you from all angles using these and other tactics in order to manipulate you so that you're thrown off track and you take the blame, they get away scot-free and, and then the cycle starts all over again.